How's it going everyone? Today I'm excited to make a video about this. So you may have seen this hanging in the background of some of the videos from my old apartment when I lived in Atlanta, but essentially this was given to me when I worked at IBM for my first patent application. And the reason why I'm making a video about this now specifically is because I just recently learned that for this application a patent was actually granted so I can now say I have my first patent, which is pretty exciting. In this video, I'm not really going to talk about the details of the specific patent idea itself. Instead, I'm just gonna talk about the process of how we were brainstorming ideas, how I got connected with the other two co-inventors, and the process of submitting the application and whatnot. Now there are two key factors that were integral to me being able to get a patent. The first is that I was working for IBM and was pretty early career. I think the part being early career is not as important, but it probably does play a factor just given that as an early career hire, you do have more free time to kind of explore other areas. And the biggest thing is that at IBM, they really, really encourage patenting. They are proud that they have so many patents, which is a ridiculous number. I don't know off the top of my head how many they have, but they have a ridiculous number of patents. And they're proud of it, I think, because it signals innovation. But realistically, I think it's probably because they make a lot of money from it with other companies using their technology that they have patents for. So the whole infrastructure was already set up just by working at IBM because they have a formalized process on how to document your ideas, how to pitch your ideas. Uh, they have the patent lawyers, they have templates to fill out when you are pitching your idea. The second reason is I had a really good team with two other co-inventors that had been through this process. They both had multiple patents um, and they were kind of able to quickly weed out ideas that I was pitching that were not patentable or they were like, oh, this one might have some substance behind it. So I have to give a shout out to Derek and Bob who were very helpful throughout the process and are the other two co-inventors on the patent. As far as how I got into patenting, I always thought patenting was cool and I always did take notes of any ideas I had that I thought were novel or could be capitalized on, but most of them were for the latter, like more from an entrepreneurial standpoint. But Obviously, I haven't ever done anything entrepreneurial with any of those ideas, but all this just to say that I've always kind of been interested, and then as a new hire at IBM, they really tout the number of patents they have, and then I kind of just reached out to some people to try and get connected, and I attended a lunch and learn, and then I got connected with these two individuals that have experienced patenting. In my experience, I think having a good team was absolutely critical because a, it's a lot more fun, but B, you can bounce ideas off each other. And it's also just a lot of work, I think, if you were just one person. So having three people definitely helped. Basically how we operated was every week I was the iteration manager or scrum master. Basically we would have a meeting and there was a Trello board just organizing into columns the different subject areas. So that was probably like the first column. Second one is specific ideas. The third one is maybe ideas that we think might be fruitful and we collectively would all try and do our own homework and see if there's any prior art, prior art being evidence that this idea already exists. And then we had additional columns for ideas that were further along and uh, we were preparing to pitch to IBM's internal invention disclosure team, which is basically like the team that you pitch to, they evaluate if it's valuable to IBM or if it already exists. And then depending on the outcome of that, then they may or may not proceed with the application. And then of course there's a column for just like scrapped or we, we don't think it's useful. So basically every week we would just talk about problems we had or ideas, just catching up on things. but. The key takeaway, I think, is that you don't necessarily have to be super, super technical. Like if you read the patent that was granted for me, it's basically just a common problem that we have all faced and uh, it's specifically about just labeling 
the electrical ports on like power strips or if we're looking at like racks in a server, the specific outlets. So you really can patent anything. It doesn't have to be like groundbreaking, but it can just be like a process or a method. Even if all that the pieces in that invention already exist, it can still be patented as a whole new process. And you just have to prove that it could work. You don't actually have to demonstrate your idea and make it, which is key. There's a lot more leeway than people actually expect. Our general approach for coming up with ideas was starting with a problem area and then trying to think of ways to use technology to solve that or mitigate that problem or that pain. Of course, IBM is a technology company, so that's kind of why we gravitated towards using technology and we're software engineers, so we probably naturally gravitate towards thinking of ideas to use technology to solve problems, but that's just how we did it. And it's really not as difficult as you would think. I think within a time span of six to eight months or so, we submitted two patent applications. Of course, the first patent was granted, but the second application may or may not get granted. But that just goes to show that it's not as difficult as you would think to come up with ideas that probably have some substance behind it. I can only speak for myself, I should say, but I'm totally just an average guy. I'm not like a super innovative inventor by any means. As far as the process, it is very, very, very slow. This is not something that you would want to consume your whole life because you're really in the hands of other people throughout the process. So, I mean, looking at Google Patents now for the patent idea that was granted, the patent application was filed on May 25th, 2022, and it was granted on December 19th, 2023. So it was really, really slow, and that doesn't even include the time prior to the patent getting issued, where we were searching for prior art, documenting our idea, pitching it to IBM's internal teams, talking to IBM's lawyer and reviewing their patent application and making the diagrams for it. So all in all, the process was very, very slow. I just wanna emphasize that it's better to have multiple ideas in the pipeline at once because even when you have everything ready, you've done the prior art search, you feel confident that this is a good idea, you have to schedule a meeting with IBM's internal review team and sometimes that can be months out in advance. Overall, I'm really excited about it just to say that I have a patent and put it on my LinkedIn and resume, but from a financial standpoint, it's not really a huge draw. I think I did get a $1,500 bonus when I had my first patent application go in. Of course, that was pre-tax, and then I didn't get anything for the second application I believe I might have been able to get a $500 bonus for when the patent was granted, but now that I've left IBM, I'm not sure if I'm still eligible or not. Overall, I hope this was helpful because I think going into the process, I kind of thought patents had to be super niche and nitty gritty with a lot of detail on specific tech stacks. But in reality, I ended up getting a patent on something that has nothing to do with my day-to-day -day job as a software engineer or MLAI infrastructure instead. It was just for labeling power outlets on a power strip. So hope this was helpful and hopefully you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe for more. Thanks. <laughs>